Customs get a whiff of undeclared undesirables in small bottles. We need to try and establish what the intention of them is coming into New Zealand. A father's gift for his daughter is unwrapped early by the Ministry for Primary Industries. Oh, that's pretty sad, I think, really. And customs cut to the chase, chopping up a homemade toy piano with very dodgy tuning. It's fairly impressive you don't see something like this every day, not on this scale, at least. Auckland Airport customs staff have a job envied by many, but that job never ends. Today, there's an unusual task for customs officer Julie. A Tongan man is in the red zone with a large number of undeclared bottles he's brought in from the US. This was a referral from MPI um, after being through the x-ray. The passenger says that they're oiled. The unidentified liquids have hand-printed labels saying Dior, Izzy Miyake, and Paris Hilton, names normally associated with expensive, high-quality perfume. Where did you get these from? Ewan. Yeah, we're about this market or a shop or a factory. They're from the store. Which store? I don't know. I don't remember. I the sheer number of bottles they keep finding makes customs smell a rat. It's a huge quantity here. Is there any in here as well? Only in these three. Before long, the count reaches 500, and there is still more to go. Did you pay for them? You did? Out of your own money? Yes, yeah, so how much did you pay? I, I don't make sure. So far, customs have more questions than answers. We need to try and establish what the intention of them is coming into New Zealand. Whatever the contents of the bottles, the situation's starting to stink. At his post on the belt at the International Mail Centre, Customs Officer Tim has a knack for spotting anything suspect that sails past. So we're just profiling a few packages here. Uh, this runs out of China. Just having a look for anything out of the ordinary, unusual. This large box triggers Tim's suspicion. OK, so it's a little baby grand piano by the looks of things. X-ray not overly conclusive, but all in all, with the other indicators there, I'm not really happy with with the whole package itself, so we might have another look at it. A tiny baby grand piano is one thing, but the spaces inside are what Tim wants to investigate. Anything could be hidden within, and there's only one way to find out. So just get straight into it. As I say, it, it looked fairly consistent on the X-ray, but the other indicators that we look for, I'm not overly happy with, so see what's inside. As soon as Tim breaks the seal, a strong smell floods out. Okay, so straight away, there's a really strong smell of paint or, or lacquer or something like that, which, you know, is, is fairly unusual. Whoever made this made it very recently. And that's what we have, a little grand piano. The sound is consistent with its poor construction. It obviously works. There's nothing, nothing too obvious. It may have been destined for a $2 shop. You can see it's pretty terrible. Uh, the different components don't match up at all. They're not even uniform. Tim suspects there is more to this piano than just bad workmanship, so he keeps searching. At Auckland Airport, the day is flying by for Ministry for Primary Industries inspectors. Flying by with butterflies. Wow. Some pretty amazing ones in there, right? Yeah. This display of exotic specimens is a treat for biosecurity inspector Rory. All right, what have we got in this one here? Uh, this is just one big one. One big one? Yeah, with many. <laughs> we'll have a look and see, shall we? The man is keen to share his story of good Filipino fortune. I bought them in a department store in, in Manila. And there's actually a few shops sell them. But I must admit, they were the best ones. Amaz you amazing. Know what that was? It was $150. Yeah? No, no. Yeah, $150. Not many Kiwi blokes are into butterflies. Who are they for? Yeah, well, my daughter. It's her birthday last night. His daughter's birthday might be a Filipino fizzer. A number of these beautifully mounted specimens are registered on the CITES endangered list. The one we have here is Trotus species, a bird wing butterfly found in Australasia. We believe is this butterfly here. And this distinguishing feature is the yellow patterns on the wings. So, unfortunately, the gentleman isn't going to be allowed this one today. But we've got to go through and check all of the other different ones he's got on there. 
the different components don't match up at all. At the Auckland International Mail Centre, customs officer Tim is inspecting a miniature grand piano that struck the wrong chord with him. This component here has been sellotaped on to keep it in place. Then Tim realises this piano is hiding more than poor craftsmanship. Just see around, around this edge where it looks like a, a whitish pink colour underneath the top layer of the paint. It looks like the piano lid is made of something other than wood. That's definitely what we're after. Tim's got a fair idea of the composition, but he takes a tiny sample for the narcotic test. We'll just get a little bit out and put it in. What we're hoping for is a, a colour change to purple, and that's definitely what we're after. That piano is made up of compressed contact NT by the looks of things. When Tim starts to dismantle the toy piano, he makes an extraordinary discovery. That's phenomenal, eh? At Auckland International Airport, customs staff are still dealing with a huge amount of undeclared liquid-filled bottles brought in from the US by a Tongan national. Well, it could be a um, roll of perfume. It's what's inside the poorly labelled bottles that's in dispute. It's oil. There's body oil. It's not oil. I'm serious. They say, by that, there's body oil. I think it's... There's body oil. Irrespective of the content's composition, the law around non-declaration is clear. The man finally reveals the destination for his comprehensive cargo right here in New Zealand. At the stage, um, we've been told they're for family use, but looking at the quantity, there's way more than family use here. How many for each family member? You don't know? But the riddle is about to be solved. His family doesn't smell bad, they just sell goods. Do your family have a stall at the market? Do they go to the market? Where do they sell it? No one's just kidding with that. Not you, your family. I don't know. Buyer beware, this enterprising gentleman has simply decanted and rebranded in an effort to increase his profit margin. I just bought a, a big bottle and uh, my, my wife bought this one and put it in there. So your wife bought a big bottle and then put them into the small bottles. But these bottles smell quite sanitary when compared to some other ones that customers find in his personal baggage. Yeah, they look like personal medications, although one of the bottles got somebody else's name on. So we'll just have a quick chat to him about that one. At the International Mail Centre, the miniature toy piano has been thoroughly investigated by Customs Officer Tim. The pink substance has tested positive for contact NT. We want that pink powdery stuff there. It's fairly impressive you don't see something like this every day, not on this scale, at least. And there we go. Well, that is definitely compressed contact NT, which is the main precursor in the manufacture. Tim is now deconstructing the piano to see how much contact NT has been used in the toy's manufacture, and it's a huge amount. Ooh. It's a really good concealment. But a really good find as well. We'll just have a look at what they've done. It just looks like a layer of hessian they've painted straight over the top of it. it. Just shows how strong this compressed contact is. That's that's bloody rock hard. Unfortunately for the exporters of this piano, their ever creative methods are no match for open minds and smart methods of New Zealand customs. Looking from afar, it's a, a little baby piano. You know, there's not a lot there saying that it's not. And it's not a meagre amount either. Five kilos around about of the contact NT, it sells for around $350,000 on the street in, in that form. Five kilos of contact would make easily one and a half kilos. So we're looking at a million to a million and a half. All the components of the piano containing contact NT were sent to the Customs Instruction Centre. Over at the mail belt, Dog Waldo is inspecting a pile of parcels from sunny Spain. He immediately sniffs out a packet of something he knows he'll get rewarded for. Oh, good boy, Wally. What have you got there? The package is handed over to Customs Officer Josh, who has a fair idea of what's hidden inside. This one's a little bit interesting. It's going to a room, a boarding house or something similar in Nelson. Let's put it through the x-ray and see what we've got. 
appears to be a block of something. Let's we'll have a look at that. Declarations in Spanish. Coming from eBay sales, so we'll see how legitimate that is. Items sold using eBay are often picked up by customs for collection of duty and GST charges. But Waldo's indication and the X-ray of the contents warrant further investigation. It appears to be just a packet of gauzes or sticking plasters. Surely Waldo hasn't got it wrong. It appears to be a block of something. Another mystery is closer to being solved at the customs search bench at Auckland Airport. A man with hundreds of bottles of undeclared fragrances bound for the markets has also brought in prescription meds with someone else's name on them. Yeah, they look like personal medications, though, although one of the bottles got somebody else's name on. So we'll just have a quick chat to him about that one. This is your medication here, is that correct? Yes. That's my medicine for my diabetes. It's your medicine? Yes. Why has it got your name, your wife's name on it? I think they're putting it on the So the chemist put the wrong one on, yeah? You should check that. Yes. Yeah, make sure. Do you need to do, do you need to take any medication at all now? I need to eat. All right, what do you need to eat? Like a chicken sandwich? Chicken sandwich, all right. Diabetics often require regular small meals to maintain blood sugar levels. Julie goes off in search of his family, waiting on the land side. Can I have a chat to you, please? We've got your nephew inside with us. We've got lots of questions to ask him about the goods that he's brought into New Zealand. But he needs some food. He's got diabetes. If you can buy a sandwich for him, I can take it back into him. Julie uses this as an opportunity to quiz the man's family if they know anything about what he might be planning on doing with the bottles of perfume. Does any of your family go to the markets at all? Have any stalls at the markets? Um... Any of your extended family? Uh, we don't know about your sister. Your sister? Oh, that's okay. his, uh, his wife's sister. She has a stall at the market. No idea. No idea. All right, then. OK. Water, some food. The sandwich is presented, the medication is taken, and Julie heads off to make some calls. We've been on the phone to our IPR people and we've just been through all the trademark notices and we've established that three of the 16 brands are actually IPR. IPR is intellectual property rights and designed to protect New Zealand from the unlawful importing, counterfeit or pirating of goods. So they become um, a seized items and the remainder we're going to be bonding. Julie now has the unenviable task of attempting to explain the situation to the man. You're going to destroy that? In the arrival hall, Customs and Ministry for Primary Industries staff are processing arrivals from Tonga. Friends and family always like to bring a taste of home for their loved ones. We do see a lot of these chilli bins here, and they do bring in, try to bring in a whole lot of this fruit. But it's up to biosecurity staff to make sure a gift from the islands doesn't end up a sea of trouble for our native species. On the flight from Tonga is a passenger with a bottle containing some unusual looking contents that could be of concern to the Ministry for Primary Industries. In his time in biosecurity, quarantine inspector Radi has seen it all, but the contents of this vessel are a first. At Auckland Airport, a Tongan man has flown in from the US with 568 undeclared bottles of perfume, hand-labelled with all the fancy brands. Customs officer Julie has discovered that at least some of those brands are protected, and under New Zealand law, he's breached intellectual property rights. Three of the 16 different brands of perfume that you've got here have trademark notices on them, and that trademark means that nobody else can copy or reproduce those goods. We've deemed that these goods are not for personal use. We believe they're coming into the country to be sold. We'll be seizing those. The other goods will be bonding, which means that you'll have to provide a supplier invoice and duty and GST will be payable. And once you've paid that, then we can release those goods to you. The man can't believe customs are going to waste his business opportunity. You're going to destroy that. I want to give it to my family. To sell? Yeah. yeah. Finally accepting defeat, he asks for diversion as it's his first offence. That's my first time in here. If you see my passport, that's my first time. Intellectual property law is complicated, and despite Julie's attempts to explain the situation to the man, he chooses not to comprehend. I have a lot of people that use that kind of perfume in the US. 
I'm serious. Yeah, they buy it from the shop yes. and then they use it. Yes. They're allowed to do that. Three hours out of his life and minus all the perfume, the man leaves. He has one month to sort out his paperwork and collect the remaining goods. All right then, bye. He seems quite clear on what he needs to do now and that is to get the invoicing or a receipt from his wife in the States and then bring it back here, go down to client services and pay the duty in GST and he'll be able to get the goods back. The man returned two days later and after paying GST in duty of $441 was allowed to collect the perfume bottles not protected by intellectual property rights. Still at the airport, biosecurity inspector Radi is still trying to unravel the mystery of what's inside the bizarre bottle that someone brought in from Tonga. She just declared food but she hasn't declared any animal or animal products. I've never seen this one before. The bottle's contents are definitely organic. But are they animal or vegetable? Radi consults one of his colleagues. Totally different texture. This is definitely not an animal skin, I would say. The men discuss the various attributes of the slimy material. It's like a chicken skin. After careful prodding and poking, the two biosecurity inspectors think they might have a clue. Some sort of seafood. I would say it's a, it's a kind of a sea cucumber. As this bottle of sea cucumber doesn't post any genuine threat to New Zealand biosecurity, it can cross the border. The passenger can take her unusual delicacy home to share with her relatives. Back at the Auckland International Mail Centre, Customs Officer Josh has discovered a slightly dark, slightly smelly package inside a box of medical gauzes. This to be a block of something, I think it would be it's been double wrapped because it would have quite a pungent odour. But double wrapping is no match for dog Waldo's nose for narcotics. 60 grams, including packaging. Once we test it, we'll find out its rough street value. And the NIC, or narcotics ID test, says exactly what Josh thought it would. That's definitely a positive reaction for... From previous intercepts, Josh suspects... ...bought using the notorious online black market website Silk Road although the contents of this parcel differ a little from the usual deliveries. We usually find the likes of contact NT or the pseudoephedrine. Anonymous buyers and sellers using Silk Road traded with what we now know to be called bitcoins. The FBI shut it down late in 2013 after it had operated illegally for two and a half years. This is a great find, I'm quite excited. It just goes to prove the old adage, buyer beware. Customs intercept and destroy illegal goods like this all the time. There are no refunds. The two and a half grams of hash was sent to the Customs Destruction Centre. That is fine for you, sir. Over at the airport, Ministry for Primary Industries inspectors are breaking bad news to a man who's innocently bought a collection of butterflies in from Manila, thinking they'll make an ideal present for his daughter. Some of the butterflies are CITES issues, which is the trading and endangered species, so we're just going to check all the rest of the ones in here, as you can see and the rest of the ones in there and see if any of them match the other CITES butterflies that we have around the corner. Biosecurity inspector Rory explains how CITES works and which butterflies are endangered. This one here was the one that I originally looked under for CITES and with your big one in the middle there is going to be the male version along the same species. Similar, yes, and it's not allowed. As Rory cross-checks the list with the butterflies in the frames, yeah, it comes under Trotus, so I'm going to say all of those are not allowed. The man's exotic collection starts dropping like flies. So all of the other butterflies along the bottom line here are related to the ones on the CITES issue as well, so we're going to have to remove the bottom three big ones as well as the middle one. It's all a shock for this straight-shooting Kiwi that did everything by the book, buying from a supposedly legitimate manila shop and declaring the collection to Ministry for Primary Industries. Yeah, I bought them in Robinson's apartment store, a bit like Kmart. You know? I didn't think about whether or not they were a, a restricted or a protected species. I suppose it applies to butterflies as equally as it does birds or any other animal. Sadly, not all the 98 million people in the Philippines are wealthy, and the country's wildlife is being decimated. For Philippines? Yeah. People are fighting hard for the dollar on this. But there is one piece of good news. OK, so all of the butterflies in this collection here are fine, so the gentleman can have this packet. Excellent. So that one there is fine for you, sir. This, that one there for you, yeah, that one's fine, yep. And these will go to Department of Conservation. They'll put them into their collection just for evidence. 
but uh, that's up to the Department of Conservation what they do with them. It is sad because it's such a beautiful collection, you know, it looks so pretty, you know. But hey, if we don't protect these things, I suppose ultimately there'll be none left to protect, so it needed to be done. The butterflies were kept by the Department of Conservation as exhibits.